Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and uh, the All Blacks have hammered Argentina keeping that uh, incredible Eden Park record in check. They got 50 games unbeaten at that venue by beating Argentina 42 points to 10. It was a first half blitz from New Zealand with 35 points to 3 up at the break and scored a try very early in the second half as well. Um, and it was always going to be a very big ask for Argentina, and they never really came back, could never really come back. Um, it was almost a case of as good as they were last week, Argentina as bad as they were this week, kind of maybe a similar kind of situation with New Zealand, who struggled with accuracy last week, didn't struggle with accuracy in the first half. Five tries in, in the first 40 minutes, the game all but wrapped up, and a much, much better, probably the best performance we've seen under Scott Robertson that first sort of 40 minutes. Before we get to the game, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. It was the perfect start for uh, for New Zealand with Dave McKenzie opening the scoring um, after a chip ahead from Jordy Barrett. McKenzie running in behind. Very wet conditions at Eden Park. And uh, McKenzie dabbed down in the fifth minute to open the scoring. He added the extras. He, he kicked beautifully. I don't think he missed a kick uh, to Damian McKenzie. Uh, Austria did get some points back. Through the boot of Santiago Carreras in the 11th minute. Um, sort of game felt like it was a bit alive, but uh, then Ardi Sevilla going over in the 16th minute. Dave McKenzie adding the extras, and just five minutes later, Caleb Clark going over. Dave McKenzie adding the extras. 21 points to three. Argentina had barely had any chance with ball in hand. They were being dominated in the scrums. Uh, the lineups were all right, but then Rony Moore wasn't being set up very well. Um, you know, the, the New Zealand Moore looked really, really good. I think the big thing about this All Blacks performance is that there wasn't a single facet of the game. They didn't dominate. They were physically hammered Argentina. Argentina had no real answer for the physicality that New Zealand pitched up with. Um, McKenzie um, was was really good. Uh, Will Jordan went over the 29th minute. And I mean, that was a try which kind of summed it up. Um, I think it really it was the Caleb Clark try. I think it was Caleb Clark try, actually, where Argentina had... Uh, you know, try to try to kick it behind, charge down. The fell back to I think it was Bertino, who then tried to grab it in behind. His grabber hit the boot of Jordy Barrett, um, and then it went all the end up all the way back inside their own twenty-two. Well, in fact, they, they ended up on their try line, managed to run up to twenty-two, and then Gonzalo Bertino, the ball was considered out. Tuba Vai ran up to the line, and Gonzalo Bertino looked right, picked up the ball, passed it into the hands of Tuba Vai. It was really really poor, and you kind of felt well. You know, you're going to play like that. That's what you're going to get. Uh, Bowden Barrett went over after Will Jordan in the 35th minute and at halftime, as mentioned, 35 points to three. The perfect start of the second half with Will Jordan going over in the 41st minute, 42 points to three at 42 minutes. And we thought we were in for a really, really big score. Um, so the only credit I can give to Argentina is the fact that after conceding that early try, they kind of woke up a bit um, and New Zealand didn't score any more points. They eventually got points themselves. They, they lost Pumas in the 71st minute as Jean Cruz Malia went over. Thomas Alban was making no mistake and uh, final score was 42 points to eight. Uh, New Zealand had to do a bit of defending at the end. Um, Amour getting a yellow card, but nothing really was ever going to threaten that, that lead with New Zealand leading the game for 74%. Um, sorry, 95% of the game. And they spent in the lead. If look at some of the stats, for example. It, it tells a story, as, as stats often do. So in summary, uh, six tries to one, six conversions as well from Damian McKenzie. Um, kicked really nicely. Uh, Argentina had more carries, but nine line breaks to three. Uh, 21 turnovers lost by Argentina. Six turnovers, one from New Zealand. Um, territory, for example, New Zealand actually had less, which is obviously which is not rare for New Zealand who, who tap from deep, like to counter-attack, for example. We look at the possession, for example, 51% for New Zealand, 49% for Argentina, but the majority of the game being played between the halfway line and the Argentinian 22. Uh, we look at the set plays, for example, New Zealand 90% scrum for success rate. I think they won five scrum penalties in the end of, of those 10 scrums. 94% uh, line-up success rate, seven restarts received, um, and uh, which is 100%. So really good there. If you look at the attack, for example, 260 post-contact meters, more than double that of Argentina, three times as many line breaks as well. Um, the, the, the breakdown was dominated by New Zealand. Uh, Discipline-wise, 10 penalties conceded by New Zealand, 11 from Argentina, of which I think five or six were in the first half, were really, really sloppy. Uh, if you look at the defense, for example, um, Argentina at 81%, missing 31 tackles, not ideal. And, and New Zealand, interestingly enough, all you talk about the idea, I always got the sort of theory that when you look at teams dominating games, uh, at the moment, they sort of tend to kick more. 
35 kicks from New Zealand to 21 from Argentina. And look at the difference it made. In terms of top performers, uh, Will Jordan topped the carry chart with 12. John Kuzmani with 10. Artie Sevilla with 9. Uh, Will Jordan breaking the line twice as did Artie Sevilla. Defensively, Tupo Vai uh, with a really big defensive shift at 19. Ethan Blackhead with 18. Artie Sevilla with 13. Um, uh, Santiago Chugabares and Jacqueen Oviedo, the best tacklers for, for Argentina. Uh, in terms of, for example, we look at uh, meters carried. Lots from Will Jordan, 84. Lots from Caleb Clark with 72. Um, uh, it, it, in terms of uh, dominant tackles, uh, Sam Darry, Ethan Blackhead, Ali Sevilla, Matthew Carreras, all with two. Matthew Carreras getting uh, going off an HIA. Hopefully, he'll be okay. No, no, Kakashi is an important player for um, for Argentina. In terms of uh, the most uh, productive defender, Thomas Lavanini averaged zero point four tackles per minute. He was on Ignacio Ruiz was zero point three five. A lot of the sort of the replacements, obviously, topping this chart. The best starter was Tupo by as you can imagine, he paid a full 80, completing 19 tackles, which is 0.25 tackles per minute, or a tackle every four minutes, basically, um, from him. Very, very impressive stuff. Um, that's the All Blacks, which teams fear. You know, it's an All Black side where people are going, ooh, I don't want to play against them. That's kind of what Scott Robinson's wanted to see for a while. Definitely their best performance under him. Can they kick on from it? We'll wait and see. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.